Good evening and welcome once again to Match of the Day, packed with good action and goals. And in the absence of newspapers, all the results in England and Scotland. Later, the Midland Derby between West Bromwich Albion and Wolves. But our first game is unquestionably the Match of the Day between Ipswich Town and Liverpool. On the programme, not because we're in love with them, but because they're top of the table. And it's the turn of Ipswich Town to try and knock them off. Witnessed by your commentator, John Motson. Kenny Dalglish needs just one goal to become the first man to score 100 league goals for one club in England and Scotland. The 99 he scored for Liverpool includes seven against Ipswich, three of them here at Portman Road. And today he plays up front because Michael Robinson has a twisted ankle and Liverpool are forced to make their first change in eight matches. So Ronnie Whelan plays his first league game since last April. Ipswich are unchanged with Kevin Steggles keeping the number five shirt even though Russell Osman is clear of suspension. Mark Brennan, who's 18, plays his third league match in midfield, and the substitute is Mitch Davray, who scored the only goal in the corresponding match last season. Referee this afternoon is Martin Bodnam of Brighton. Not the happiest of grounds for Liverpool in red, playing from the right. They've lost on five of their last nine visits in the league. This is John Walk for Ipswich. Brennan given away to Rush, but they've won two League Cup or Milk Cup ties here in that period, Liverpool. Alan Kennedy for them. And Sammy Lee, the furthest player forward there. That's Nickel. And here's Sunis. Kennedy. Good running from the midfield by Nickel and also on the far side by Dalgleish. And here's Nickel in a good position. And if he got hold of that properly, he must have scored. Kenny Dalgleish, as always, a threat. He drifted away to the right. And when the ball was knocked in, it was Steve Nickel who had the chance. But he made a present of it, really, to Paul Cooper. And quite a stiff match there. Steve Nickel in midfield. O'Callaghan. Steggles was struggling a bit there against Whelan. This is Sunis, and now it's Lee, and Liverpool are looking dangerous. Rushes through, and he got a foot to it marvellously well. He was onside, so it would have counted. Sammy Lee getting it forward, and Rush, whose instinct for goals now is something people are beginning to say in the Jimmy Greaves class. He always seems to be on the end of what Liverpool produce. Well, so far, they've hardly got the ball out to O'Callaghan, who's playing as a natural winger. Here's Mariner. This is Putney now. He's looking for Gates. And the ball was too tight for McCall. Gates. Good cross. Walk! Well, by John Walk's standards, it wasn't a difficult chance. Eric Gates supplied a very good cross there, under stress on the left, and Walk didn't meet it as well as he normally does. Instructions coming Kelly. here from Charlie Woods for Ipswich. Kelly. To Kevin O'Callaghan, who has wandered from wing to wing in an attempt to get the ball, but has so far been virtually starved of it. Whelan. Dalglish rushes over on the far side. Whelan's in the area. Lee was there as well. Header by Steggles. Kennedy. Soonest moves forward. So does Rush on the far side. And well taken by Cooper. And it was powerfully struck by Ian Rush. Brennan. Steggles forward. Lawrence heading it across to Hansen, and they made it look easy. Hansen. 
five ahead of him for Liverpool. Six now. One of them is Dalglish here. Oh, and he's got Steve Nicol in. It's a good finish. McCall, a brilliant clearance. A fantastic clearance off the line by Steve McCall. Applause ringing round the ground for one of the saves of the season, but not by the keeper. Here's Burley for Ipswich. And now it's Gates. And Grobola missed it. Steve Nicol beat Paul Cooper, but Steve McCall got back. The ball looked as good as in, but he got it against the post and away. Great defending. Corner to Ipswich, and Butcher up with Grobola. Steve Nicol must have thought he'd scored. He edged the ball nicely past the keeper. It was rolling in. But what? A good piece of quick thinking by Steve McCall. Rush. Neil. Dalglish. Sunis. And again, Liverpool's ability to spread the play from one side of the pitch to the other. Here's Putney. That's a good-looking ball for Mariner. And he's ahead of Lawrence here as Mariner. Or he was, and he's still there. And he hits the outside of the goal. A very good ball by Putney, and Mariner there. Fox Lawrenson. He had to come back and try and beat him again. And in the end, his shot went the wrong side of the post from the Ipswich point of view. Here's Lee, Rush, Neil, offside. Well, it may be nil-nil, but we've seen plenty of action in both penalty areas. Both goalkeepers have had to be very alert. Gates onto Burley's pass, Lawrenson is with him. And still Gates, well held by Grubbler, that was a good save. Whether you called it a shot or a cross, it was still a good save. As Walt was coming in, and Gates really drove it. Here's Lee, and off the head of Steggles. again with that spring leap of his but he was beaten by Hansen this is Whelan Dalglish has got some space and Ipswich were caught and he's caught them again with the ball into Ronnie Whelan Sunes saved by Cooper Ipswich were lucky because Dalglish had opened things up and Liverpool should have scored Ronnie Whelan's first touch possibly letting him down there and he in the end had to give it to Sunes and Cooper managed to save an eventful first half with perhaps the most memorable incident being the goal line save by Steve McCall from Steve Nicol but as it is the half time score is nil nil Ronnie Moran and Tommy Eggleston on their way to the bench for the start of the second half Liverpool playing now from the left. I've lost only two out of 22 matches since the Charity Shield. And indeed are unbeaten in their last 12. And they get an offside decision there against Eric Gates. And indeed, uh, in those 22 matches, Liverpool have kept 12 clean sheets. So Ipswich have got a record to dent there if they can. Header. Here's Lawrenson. McCall. And Neil. Butcher.
his touch, and O'Callaghan following his own run forward, and Walk is through, and Johnny Walk. He collected it once more. Mariner was in there too. Walk ran on. They beat the offside trap. And Walk pushed it past Grobbler. 61 minutes gone. Ipswich take the lead. With John Walk's 94th league goal for them. Which will have pleased them down there on the bench. Lawrence. Sunis. Walk now seen in defence. It's been played short for Dalglish. He's got it! That's the goal that Kenny Dalglish wanted. He's made history. No wonder the Liverpool players go to him. Joe Fagan is glad that Liverpool are level. But Kenny Dalglish is in the record books. The first man to score 100 league goals for the same club in Scotland and 100 for an English club. And what a goal with which to clinch the century. Cutting in from the right and firing it beautifully wide of Cooper into the far side of the goal. Quite a few other players got close to this particular uh, record of Dalglish's in their careers. 100 for one club and 90-odd for another. Alan Gilzean was one. Joe Baker was another. And Huey Gallagher. But Dalglish has uh, rewritten the pages today. Putney. Terrific save by Grobbelar. Good effort by Trevor Putney. First time out of nothing. And Grobelar showing what an accomplished goalkeeper he's now become. Butcher's on the near post with the flick. Walk was nearly in. And Sunes tries to ward off Putney. Well, this has really set the game up now. There are 25 minutes to go, and Liverpool are streaming forward here. If Lawrence can play it to the right, there's real chances. Lee. They've got so many players up, and Dalglish was in there again. Mark Brennan, 18, comes off, and the man coming on, Mitch Davray. Davray, who scored the winning goal against Liverpool here last season. He'll play up front with Paul Mariner. And Eric Gates will drop back into midfield to fill the hole left by the departure of young Brennan. And Mariner trying to turn Hansen, but at least he shook him off. Mariner can forage a bit now, because there's another tall target man up there with the arrival of Dabre. Gates, walk. Lee. Now rushes going through the centre. And... Oh, it was Steggles. Dalglish, no, blocked by McCall, I think. Yes, it was. Well, there's a back foul by Sunis in the midfield on Mariner. But meantime, oh, it's out on the far side. Graham Sunis is being booked by the referee, and I suspect that's because he fouled Paul Mariner way back behind the play while Ipswich continued their attack. Kevin Steggles nearly put the ball in his own goal. When it came out, it seemed that Dalglish must score and Steve McCall blocked it. Ronnie Whelan getting into the action in the centre of the field. Dalglish finds Sunis. Alan Kennedy on the far side.
Sorensen was there first. And Gates, it's a good pass. Walk. Burley going up outside him. The two big fellas in the middle. But there were two big fellas there for Liverpool too, and one of them was Hansen. From Burley's cross. Putney. Walk is wide on the left. And Mariner is up with Kennedy. Sooners appeals. The ball finally does go out, and the appeal is turned down. It's a corner. Sooners kicks the ball away, which is slightly dangerous when you've already been booked. Oh, and a brilliant save. Dagres was the header, and Grobelar kept it out. Quite how, from this angle, I just don't know. Butcher got up and didn't make contact, Davray did, and Grobelar's had a good afternoon. Steve McCall. Oh, he tried to on the ball a moment there. This is Gates, nice play. And he's onside, it's Mariner, and Grobelar. That was a terrific piece of anticipation by the goalkeeper. To fire, really good stuff from Grobelar. Well, he's had his critics as Bruce Grobelar, but that was a fine piece of judgment to come to meet Mariner that far out. Sooners nicely done, a good one too by him. And he tried to go around Butcher, who brought him down, and this is going to be another booking. The Ipswich captain this time. Here's Sooners, and here's Neil. So, a 1-1 draw here, but a personal landmark in the life and times of Kenny Dalglish, and indeed in the history of English and Scottish football. Well, what a day for Kenny Dalglish, and indeed for Steve McCall, who hardly put a foot wrong and saved two almost certain goals. A fine game and a fair result. A different look at Kenny Dalglish's superb goal once again gives me the chance to tell you that it will be part of a bumper November-December Goal of the Month competition when we'll show you the chosen goals during half-time in our live match on Friday, January the 6th. Well, an accomplished goal indeed. Well, now let's see what the players of West Bromwich Albion and Wolverhampton Wanderers can accomplish as they line up at the Hawthorns in front of 18,000 people and commentator Barry Davis. Both teams are unchanged, which in the continued absence of Cyril Regis means another chance in the Albion side for the colourful 19-year-old Mickey Perry. But he's being pushed for that front striker role by Derek Monaghan, who's been out of the side for over a year now with a cartilage problem. And it could well be that Regis will soon be back in contention as well. That's the Wolves lineup trying to prove that at least one statistic is a damn lie. That which says that they are the worst side in the club's history. The record books show 19 matches without a victory, but there can be few better places to end that run than on the ground of your nearest opponents. The experienced FIFA official, Keith Hackett, is in charge this afternoon. I'll be in attacking the goal to our left on a very mild afternoon with a hint of rain in the air. Indeed, we're promised heavy rain before the 90 minutes is up. And among those in the crowd this afternoon, is the England manager, Bobby Robson, in the front row there of the director's box. Clive Whitehead, the Albion skipper, John Pender. Clark. Pender again. And it's an interesting chase, which I think Whitehead is going to win. But a free kick has been given against him. Challenge on Steve Mardenborough, player that Wolves managed to gain from Coventry City. In fact, Swear has just been given in the end. Acrobatic clearance by Zonderman. Hibbets. Uh, upended after the ball had gone by Andy Blair. 
Zondervan. And Baron finding there was enough pace on the ball for the collection. And there's young Perry, whose hair has been given an orange rinse. An idea of his girlfriend, I understand. was sleeping a bit and Bradshaw did well extremely well certainly an error in the defense which allowed Arbion to get behind the back man as the ball was played so he stayed on side well, Bradshaw needs three games after today for his 200th in the league Good header by Whitehead, really attacked the ball. Luck. Andy Blair, this could be promising. Cartwright called for it, got it, has a chance if he can... The ball was slightly behind him as he was trying to make the shot. But he certainly orchestrated that. He was unlucky not to find the finishing note that he was looking for. against Whitehead An obstruction on Dale Rudge Turns, Mardenborough, and not a bad try. <laughs> Thought the ball had got a deflection. In fact, I think the referee is right. It's just a question of um, getting slightly underneath it, but it was a smart enough turn. Luke, Whitehead. On the van. Balls back in numbers, everybody behind the ball. Joel. Gary Owen. And so we reach half time at 0 0, and Ron Wiley, the Albion manager, I would imagine as disappointed as anybody else in the ground. Because it really was a thoroughly disappointing first half. Well, the Albion supporters start this hoping that Cyril Regis will be fit for Wentz's Milk Cup tie against Aston Villa and that he'd be rather better employed then than signing autographs, which he's doing during the half time interval here. Wolves, the only team in Britain without a victory and the only team in the four divisions without an away point. Here's Alan Dodd and Kenny Hibbert, to whom they look for the greatest inspiration. And has he got Mardenborough away here? Graney pulling wide. Header came from Clark. It's Whitehead, and he's fouled by Danny Craney. And talking of Craney, his spell on loan actually ends today but I understand that although he hasn't signed yet the odds are that he will Perry Luke available Blair Cow drill Owen off the referee Snapshot by Gary Thompson. It wasn't a bad idea, seeing as the ball had changed direction completely by hitting Keith Hackett. Joel, only to Hibbert. Now, this is a chance for Wolves. They've got two men over here. And yes, by Danny Craney.
And look at the delight on the faces. Well, Graham Hawkins, the manager, said, I don't mind how we play when we get our first victory, but let it come soon. They've been waiting all season. Is this to be the afternoon? Came from the terrible era. The first cross was not high enough to reach its man. The ball was only half clear. Came down to Danny Craney, who dispatched it with some aplomb. first goal for his club coming in the 52nd minutes and producing rare delights among those who've traveled down from Molyneux it's a fairly hackneyed comment 1-0 1-0 but Wolves supporters haven't been able to say it too often this season Drill. Blair. Martinburg has gone to the left. Danny Craney in possession. Wolves getting more players forward. Craney's made the opening and scores an absolute beauty. Well, it's all come right for the Scotsman and it's all come right for Wolves. Saw the opening, cut inside, and what a good left foot. Joel. Good play by Zondervan. Well, that's too much. Go kick. Well, there won't be too much doubt now, surely, about all signing him next week. The figure from Celtic was put down at £20,000. Don't know about personal terms, but certainly the crowd will want him to stay. Linesman furiously waving his flag, but Mr. Hackett a little reluctant, and then finally does see. And it's probably the expected change. Mickey Perry, who comes off, and Derek Monaghan gets back into it. Craney, just too much on it. Oh, Martin will get it back again. Nice body sway, releases to Clark, who is onside. Real chance here to wrap the game up. And Clark surely has done so. What a good finish by Wayne Clark. And Wolves have a 3 0 lead. And some good play by Martin Burr. Nice body sway, good timing of the pass. And some very cool finishing by Wayne Clark, which would have done credit to his more famous brother, Alan. West Bromwich Albion nil, Wolverhampton Wanderers three. And this unhappy sequence of 19 games without a victory, which started at the back end of last season, is surely at an end. Joel. Another hurried cross. John Humphrey, what a happy knack of being in the right place at the right time. Here's Owen. Graham Hawkins with the fair hair and the uh, brown coat about to bring on his substitute, Jeff Palmer. Chap in the, in the light colour coat is Jim Barron, Hawkins number two. And it's Mumba whom he replaces. So a suggestion here that Wolves are going to batten down the hatches. Jeff Palmer, a defender. 
15 minutes remaining, a 3-0 lead to protect. Offside against both Clark and Palmer. No doubt that the sting has gone out of the game. Monaghan with a chance. Thompson blocked by Bradshaw. Off the angle of post and crossbar from the shot by Zondervan. This thing suddenly came back. Blair. And he was unlucky, Zondervan. So indeed was uh, Thompson, who turned smartly enough. The ball blocked by Bradshaw when it came out to Zondervan. He was denied by the woodwork. Thompson. And it ran Wool's way. Martin Joel. And it's finally in. Gary Thompson finally gets a consolation. Bradshaw was hopping around the goal from one side to the other. Thompson and Monaghan went up together. And then Gary Thompson gives Albion a consolation goal with less than a minute remaining. Cowdrill. Away by Dodd. Not too effectively. Zondervan and suddenly the away supporters want the final whistle. Owen. They've been doing their best to play on the nerves of Wolves. But their best. I suspect will not be good enough. check of the watch by Keith Hackett and the match of the day has become the smile of the day as Derek Dugan the chairman goes I'm sure to congratulate his team two of the goals coming from the man who is on loan from Celtic and who will now will surely be signed Danny Craney getting a pat there from his manager Graham Hawkins and Wayne Clark getting the third goal past Paul Barron a final score West Bromwich Albion 1, Wolves 3, and at long last the depressing run has come to an end, and few will begrudge them that. Well, I certainly don't, and let's hope that that win encourages all those who have the best interests of Wolves at heart in this most uh, difficult time for them. Bob. It was certainly the day of the underdog in the first division, and that Wolves result was typical of the upsets. Three of the four bottom clubs this morning all won, Wolves, Leicester, and Notts County. One exception, as you can see, is Watford, beaten at home by neighbours Luton. In another local derby, Spurs came from behind to beat Queen's Park Rangers. Mark Falco scored the first two goals in Spurs' 3-2 win over Rangers, with Steve Archibald getting the third, his 14th goal in the last 16 games. Trevor Christie scored twice, as did his teammate John Chidozzi, as Notts County thrashed Aston Villa 5-2. Gary Lineker, Leicester's top scorer last season, and Steve Linex put them two up against Arsenal in the first 30 minutes, with Alan Smith getting a third in the last minute. And Frank Bunn hit a late winner for Luton in their 2-1 victory at Watford. Now let's see how all this affects the top of the first division. Liverpool go two points clear, but they could lose the lead to either West Ham or Manchester United, who meet at Upton Park tomorrow. Spurs stay fourth, and Luton move up five places to fifth. In the second division, the last unbeaten record in Britain ended when leaders Sheffield Wednesday were beaten at Crystal Palace. Look at that amazing scoreline at Portsmouth, where Oldham just hung on to win after being four up at half-time. David Giles, Palace's Welsh international, scored the goal that brought Sheffield Wednesday down to earth after 19 games without defeat. Kerry Dixon got his 16th, uh, 17th goal of the season to earn Chelsea a draw at Leeds, and Kevin Keegan was on the mark again with a penalty in Newcastle's 2-1 win over Cambridge. Now the top of the table, Wednesday's lead is down to three points over Chelsea, with Newcastle moving into third place on goal difference from Manchester City. On to Division 3, and there's the top score of the day, Burnley 7, Port Vale 0. Sheffield United were not far behind, beating Southend 5-0, and Lincoln got four against this morning's leaders, Bristol Rovers. 
Kevin Reeves grabbed a hat-trick in that Burnley landslide. Keith Edwards also got three, his second hat-trick in four days for Sheffield United. And John Fashionu, Justin's kid brother, scored three for Lincoln. So plenty of goals in Division 3 where there are now new leaders, Oxford United. They warmed up for Wednesday's Milk Cup tie against Manchester United with a 2-0 win over Newport. And that puts them a point clear of Bristol Rovers. Sheffield United and Burnley are both up there with the leaders. The important results in Division 4, York's win at Hartlepool, Blackpool's 2-1 victory at Hereford, and Doncaster's goalless draw with lowly Chester. York, in fact, came back from 2-0 down to beat Hartlepool 3-2 and maintain their one-point lead at the top, with Blackpool moving into second place. The highlight in Scotland's Premier Division was the meeting between champions Dundee United and this morning's leaders, Aberdeen. The score, 2-0 to Aberdeen. Archie McPherson describes how they did it. Nice turning, can it be put back? It is, it's there. Dougie Bell, 1-0. McGee into this path of Gordon Strachan, who might finish it. He has brilliantly. That win puts Aberdeen three points clear of Celtic in the Premier Division. In Division 1, the leaders Partick Thistle lost, as did Kilmarnock, who slipped from second to third in the table. Clyde gained the most emphatic win, beating Wraith 5-0. In Division 2, there was only one home winner, Queen of the South, who beat Cowdenbeath 1-0 to move into second place. Leaders Forfar were one of three away winners in this division. Finally, the pools. With nine score draws, it could be another jackpot week. Claimed by telephone for 24 points, the numbers 4 7, 15, 16, 17, 21, 39, 50, and 54. Well, slightly different format there. I hope you found the information you were looking for. Well, we football for you on Wednesday next, when in Sports Night at 10.5, you'll be able to see highlights of a fourth round Milk Cup match, plus snooker, the Coral United Kingdom Championship, and uh, one might have imagined that young... Danny Craney had chalked his left foot at half-time today, judging by the way he drilled two shots past Paul Barron, enabling Wolves to pocket three points for the first time for seven months. Good night to you. Joel, only to Hibbert. Now, this is a chance for Wolves. They've got two men over here. And yes, by Danny Craney. Martinburg has gone to the left. Danny Craney in possession. Wolves getting more players forward. Craney's made the opening and scores an absolute beauty.